What's up my fellow designers? Today, I wanted to make a video that was actually requested by somebody in our Instagraphics Pro Network about monitors. You probably clicked on this video because you wanted to know more about what kind of monitor you should buy as a graphic designer, and that's what this video is about. Before I jump into these monitors, there are five things, yes, five things that you need to know when doing your research on a monitor that's best for you. Maybe one of these monitors isn't the best fit for you because of budget or something else, but I wanna at least give you the options and know what to look for. The first thing that I want you to consider is the panel. The panel is really important. This is gonna give you the biggest color accuracy feature of the entire monitor itself. There are three different types of panels that you can get. The first one is the most common, but also the most expensive. When you start treading into this area, the monitors are gonna to start to climb up to the four, $500, $1,000 range, and even higher than that. I was doing research and actually found one monitor that was like four grand for one monitor. Can you believe that? So IPS is gonna be your way to go. If you see the Visa or VESA certified on there, that is a very high quality monitor. I would always recommend one of those VESA certifieds first. They're the UHD monitors but I wanna make sure that you understand that the IPS, the VA, and the TN, these are keys to your monitors. You can get away with a VA, uh, but try to stay away from the TN if you're a graphic designer or working in the graphics field. The second consideration is the resolution of the monitor. It's really common now to see 1080p monitors are pretty much everywhere, that's kind of the standard, but you're also gonna see the rise of the 4K, 5K, and even 8K monitors. Getting a high resolution monitor is gonna give you a higher quality image. Obviously, when you start going into the 4K, 5K, the retina displays like I have on my MacBook, 1440 is also another option for you if you can't go into the 4K region and you're trying to find a monitor, a good quality monitor on a budget, look out for the 1440 resolution as well. The third one is the refresh rate. And there's a lot of designers and people in general that don't know much about this, and so I wanna cover this very quickly. The refresh rate basically means if you're doing video and you're shooting the video at 120 frames per second, but you have the 60 hertz refresh rate monitor, you're not gonna be able to watch that video at 120. You're gonna have to watch it at 60. So it's gonna really limit you. But if you're not doing video and you're not doing high-end video like that, which most people aren't, then you don't really need to worry about this too much, but this is just a small consideration that I wanted you to think about. The fourth factor and thing to look at is the curve. These curved monitors have become really, really popular lately, and I'm even looking at them for some of my office computers, but I really want you to consider looking at a curved monitor. I've heard really good things, and how you can judge that is based on the radius as well as the millimeter. So you'll see a 1500 versus a 1900 versus an 1800. The smaller the number, the more the curve. So make sure you get a good monitor, whether you get a flat one or a curved one. Having a curved monitor can be pretty cool, but what I like personally is being able to have the split screens and that's something that I'm gonna talk about here in a, later on in the video. The fifth factor is the size. Depending on the desk or where you're gonna be using the monitor or how you're gonna be using it or how many monitors you have, you may wanna go with a little bit smaller of a size versus a bigger size. The monitors that I have now are 25 inch wide screen monitors and I really love the wide screens because they allow you to do split screens. And so I'm able to split my screen up to four screens on that and I have them all stacked up on there which is really, really cool. I can't do that on my back MacBook or I can't do that on other computers. But if you have the split screen on a bigger size like a widescreen computer that's really or a widescreen monitor, that's a really cool option. And so if you wanna get multiple monitors you can save some money but make sure you get a more gaming style widescreen monitor if you're gonna do that because you wanna have that good color accuracy, the IPS and some of the other things I talked about. And the last factor that I wanna cover for you before we jump over to the monitors themselves is the anti-screen tearing. This anti-screen tearing is actually something that I didn't even know existed. I've actually seen it happen. It's when you're right moving across the screen and you're doing something really fast and you see the screen tearing, you see some of the lagging because it's having a hard time catching up. Well, one of the ways that you solve this is by getting an NVIDIA G-Sync or a AMD FreeSync. Those are the sync monitors that are gonna help you with the anti-tearing, which is a really big deal. Something that you should be considering, something that I now know that I wanted to share with you guys as well. So those are the six factors, and now I wanna get into the seven monitors that you should be considering if you're looking for a new monitor. All right, so let's jump into it. Monitor number one is the ASUS Rogue Swift PG27U. Q. That's a long name. The ASUS, I'm actually going to read it here. The ASUS ROG or Rogue Swift PG 27UQ. And I'll put the link down in the description as well. But this is a, the IPS monitor as well. It's a 27 inch monitor. It's a beautiful monitor. Um, the resolution on that thing is 3840 
by 2160. It's a 4K monitor, very, very high quality monitor. It's pretty expensive, um, but the refresh rate on that is 144 megahertz. You turn me talk about that, that's an important factor and that's kind of where you want to be at at the minimum. Uh, the thing about this monitor is it doesn't have a curve. Um, it's not a curved monitor, it's just a flat monitor, and it does have the G-Sync anti-screen tearing. So that's a really important factor that I now know about that I wanna make sure that you look at as well. And I think that this is the best 27 inch monitor uh, without a budget. So if you're looking for a high-end, really high quality monitor, I would definitely consider this one. And I compared some of the other ASUS ROGs that were very similar to this, and this one was much more superior and kind of newer, a newer monitor in general. Monitor number two is the Dell S2721QS. That is a mouthful. We're gonna put the descriptions down there because I can hardly say them. So I'm sure you're not gonna remember that and you probably don't have a pen to write it down, which you should. Shame on you, I'm just kidding, no shame. But I want to make sure that you remember these and you actually take these down. So click the link in the description to check them out yourself. But this monitor is also an IPS. The resolution on this is also 3840 by 2160 and it's a 4K monitor. Uh, the refresh rate is 60 Hertz on this. So this is a really good monitor to be honest. Um, anything above this is probably overkill, especially on a 4K. And if you're doing graphic design, there's no curve on this one either. And it does have the anti-screen tearing with the FreeSync. So FreeSync's really great, so is the G-Sync. So these are a really good option. Um, I think this is the best budget 4K monitor that you're gonna find for under 350 bucks. So if you're looking for a tight budget, this is a really good option for you. You kind of get good bang for your buck. Monitor number three is the LG 27UN850W. It just keeps getting longer, folks. That's why the descriptions are so important. But this monitor also has the IPS panel. 3840 by 2160, it's a 4K as well, 60 Hertz, no curve, and has the anti-screen tearing with FreeSync as well. So this is a really great monitor I want you to consider. And this one I picked because it is the best budget monitor under 450 bucks, um, but it's not as good as number two. Uh, it's just something to think about, but it's another good option for you that I wanted to include here as well. All right, we're blowing through these pretty fast. We're gonna jump over to number four. And number four, I actually changed from what I was originally planning, and that's the ASUS Predator X34. This is an expensive monitor, but it is a beast. I wanted to have an ultra widescreen monitor, and that's what this baby is. It is a monster. It does have the IPS as well, 3440 by 1440. So this is a really great resolution, and it does have a curve. It's got the 1900R curve, so it's got a pretty good curve to it. So this one does have the G-Sync, I looked at this one and if I was gonna buy a monitor, it has the curve to it, it has the really high quality resolution, it's got the good refresh rate, it's got everything I need and it's under that $1,000 price point from what I've seen online. There's a few places where you can find it, but this is a really good quality monitor and it's got that 34 inch ultra wide and I love being able to split my screens. I think this is a big deal for you, something to consider. So get, get a good look at the Acer Predator X34 and if you're looking for a big widescreen monitor, this is a good way to go. So monitor number five is the Gigabyte G27QC. This is another really great monitor and this isn't IPS. So this is a little bit downgrade of the IPS to a VA, but it's almost as good as the IPS and it has the 2560 by 1440. So it's more than the 1080 by 1920, the, the typical standard size resolution, but this has a good, good resolution in it. 2560 by 1440. Um, and it also has a refresh rate that's really high of 165 hertz, and it has the curve as well, a really steep curve of 1500R. As I mentioned, the lower the, cur the lower the number, the higher the curve, and this is a really good monitor. And this monitor is the best curve monitor you're gonna find with that 1440 resolution, and you're gonna find that for under 300 bucks. So that's a really good deal for a good quality monitor, something you should consider as well. Monitor number six, is the AOC 24G2. We're stepping down in resolution and we're also gonna step down in cost. This is gonna be a good budget monitor for you, but this is a 1920 by 1080, which is great high resolution HD monitor, but it has the 144 Hertz re um, refresh rate on it, which is great. Um, it doesn't have a curve, so this is just a flat monitor and it's under 200 bucks. So this is a really good option for you if you're really on a tight budget consider the AOC 24G2. Monitor number seven, and this is the last monitor, and it's another AOC. And this is the AOC C24G1. 
This is a 24 inch model. These last two were 24s and I think all the rest of them other than the Predator were 27s. But this one is a VA panel. So we're not going into the NAs or the TAs. I mean, we're sticking with the VAs and the IPSs. But this is also 1920 by 1080, has that 144 Hertz resolution. And this one is curved. It's got the 1500 curve, which is great. And it has the free sync anti-screen tearing as well. And this monitor is the best curved monitor that you're gonna get with the 1080p resolution, and it's under 200 bucks. So whether you're going for the high-end $1,000 monitor, and you can go into those four or $5,000, $3,000 monitors if you want, but if you wanna keep it on a budget, that's what I was trying to find is something that were really relatable and realistic for you. And these monitors, these seven monitors here are gonna be a really, really good deal. So those are the seven monitors, like I mentioned, we're gonna put the descriptions for each of those in the description of the video. We'll link them so you can actually check them out on Amazon. Most of these are Amazon links. And I hope this helped you guys out. I wanted to make this video because Mercy asked, she wanted to get a monitor and that's what we're all about. If you wanna actually get some help with your graphic design career, there's a specific area that you need help in definitely jump into the Instagraphics Pro Network, join our community, join our tribe. We're doing some amazing things here and it's growing every single day, but make sure you fill out all the questions because I won't let you in. I wanna make sure that we have the best of the best. So thank you guys so much for watching. Hope this video was helpful. I look forward to seeing you guys on the next one. I'm Adrian Boysell and as always, keep looking up.